From Fortress Fund Managers, this is Do It For Grantly, a podcast where we speak with women and men in Barbados about their grantlees and other money matters. I'm Kim Howard, Marketing Manager at Fortress, and my co-host is Omar Kennedy. Hello, listeners. An entrepreneur, author, and former financial manager. In today's episode, So This Is Payday, we're pleased to have back with us Melinda Bell, founder of Estrape Finance, and Carly Pipe. Carly is a digital and creative strategist and founder of Robinson Creative. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. So let's get to it. Financial security doesn't grow on trees. It's built brick by brick with smart investments and a strong partner. To retirement, education, and whatever your future may hold, we say, bring it on. At Fortress Fund Managers, we're not afraid of the hard work, long hours, or steady saving, just like you aren't. We know better than anyone that you can't just hope for good luck. Call Fortress Fund Managers on 435-7777 to build your personal fortress. Your future. Our business, Fortress. Today, we are happy to bring you our 14th episode, the first one in season three for 2020. Fortress Fund Managers is a mutual fund company based in Barbados, and we have been in operation since 1996. We do mutual funds. That's all we do. People ask, you know, what exactly is it that you provide? Mutual funds. And Omar is going to tell you a little bit about what mutual funds are. A mutual fund is an investment product which pulls together money from investors, which is you, and you put it all in one big fund, and then it's invested all over the world so it can make money for you. It works on a principle of diversification, not putting all of your eggs in one basket. So instead of you just investing in in one stock, in one bond, in one country, Fortress will invest your money for you in hundreds and, and, and different types of stocks, hundreds of different types of bonds, countries all over the world. So in case one thing doesn't go well in one place, you have 10 different things going well in another different place. So you always ma- manage to maximize your returns while minimizing your losses. So your eggs are not all in one basket. Precisely. (laughs) And just to remind you, we have, I think it's over 13 episodes already now, all available on our website from previous episodes. So if this is your first time listening to Do It For Grantly, you've got some catching up to do. Today, we're pleased to have with us Melinda Bell, who first was here with us in our very, very first season. Hi, Melinda. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Melinda is the Managing Director of Estrape Finance, and she is um, always happy to assist uh, people to figure out how to manage their money better. So we're thrilled to have her with us again. Thank you so much for having me again. Welcome back. And for the first time, we have fellow podcaster, (laughs) runner, and awesome copywriter, Miss Carly Pipe. How are you? I ran a lot of laps this morning, but so I'm tired, but I'm really good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I appreciate you being able to be here with us even after running a bunch of laps. (laughs) So thank you very much. Uh, Carly's actually a digital and creative strategist at Robinson Creative, and so... Um, we hope to have a great discussion today. Today we're going to be talking about, so this is payday. Now that we've come to the 91st of January, um, yeah, we're just going to, you know, kind of unpack that and the fact that January is always seems to be a bit of a challenging month. Um, Christmas comes just before that and we all get excited. The buzz and the twinkle of everything, you know, seems so appealing and we get all the presents and we buy all the drinks and we eat all the food. And we do that earlier than we normally do because most people or a lot of people get paid earlier in December than they do normally. And then sometime around, I don't know, maybe two days after Christmas, it settles in that rain. You're not going to get paid for a long time. So here we are at the 91st of January. Payday has come again. Thank you. Feeling very dry. (laughs) (laughs) That's something that I struggled with a lot Mm -hmm. for many years because my business was not, I I wasn't receiving monthly payments at Mm. all. It was sort of like you do a project, you get paid on that project. You do another project sometime, you get paid on that project at some point. So learning how to manage monthly payments was really very hard for me. Mm. So I think I learned a lot of lessons <laughs> <laughs> at first. And um, what I did, which helped me, I don't know if this will help other people too, but I restructured and tried to take on more monthly paid um, projects and, and jobs and work in that kind of zone because 
that helped me a lot because most most bills you have to pay you got to pay your internet you got to mm-hmm. pay your phone um you got to put gas in your car every month most bills are set up that way yes so it helped me to change the way i worked um that's interesting pay. that that helped me a lot okay that's interesting i mean that you never really think about that that you could structure your work to suit how the rest of the world is um for many people though that's not really an option yeah. Yeah. so you have to kind of work within the parameters that you're given um I mean, Melinda, you know, you're, you help people manage their finances, but how do you sort of handle the traditional, or have you managed, grown grown to manage the traditional January pinch that many people feel? Well, it is a pinch for everybody, Mm -hmm. especially for someone who teaches people how to manage their money. (laughs) Can I be real? Yes. It can be a a challenging time for me, Mm -hmm. but... I have to make sure that I deal with my priorities and stay within my means. I mean, this Christmas, I made sure that I didn't go crazy because Mm -hmm. I knew that January was around the corner. (laughs) So I tried to stick within um, my means. I mean, I would have done something nice for myself because I always tell people it's important to make sure you enjoy what you work for. Because I think that some people feel that you can't like have a little fun but you can it's all right it's fine um but i have had to you know make sure that certain things are taken care of and just bite the bullet until you know the income comes in because january is a time when i can't really expect that there would be you know an influx of income Mm. like coming my way but at least it's really important to plan especially for the year ahead Mm -hmm. because i'm still in the planning process for this year so um i'm hoping that by the end of this year it would be a little better (laughs) for me you know so that would be better prepared right i think that's all we can ever hope for like to continually Mm -hmm. be planning and to be improving year on year indeed I, I really think that a lot of this is cultural as well. You know, mm-hmm. we're taught to over excess. Christmas has become very commercial. And even a, tra- a trend that I have noticed now where persons say, okay, we will not be as commercial on Christmas. We intend to spend more of our time and efforts in experiences. Those can still be expensive as well. So what, what do you think has given us the, the outlook that we have taken? And do you think that an experience-based Christmas can be a bit better, easier on your pocket? What, what, what do you ladies think um it could be easier on the pocket um we should look at the motivation for why people spend Mm -hmm. and um as if you're part of a family you know you're going to experience some form of peer pressure (laughs) and people are gonna have judgmental expectations (laughs) of you especially if you're the one hosting christmas Mm-hmm. They're going to be looking at, oh, you don't, oh, th- those are the same curtains I saw last year. Um, <laughs> they have holes in them? What is the problem? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Keeping up with the Joneses. Yes, Correct. Yes. Um, <clears throat> if you decide that you're going to be cost conscious this Christmas and you tell people to bring a dish, then they're going to be like, so wait, why are you not cooking for the entire family? Like, you know this is what we do we normally mm-hmm. extend ourselves to feed everybody and then what happens at the end of the month what happens in january your budget is busted basically so it's really important to not to succumb mm-hmm. to the peer pressure i know family is everything but you can't allow them to take t- how you spend your budget it's Absolutely. true i love that <laughs> Everybody bring a dish. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think it varies too because some people do kind of do take that potluck approach. Um, the challenge will come is like, well, I remember years ago when we used to do that. Um, it was always a case of selecting who you thought should bring dessert because you would ensure if that person tended to be a little late that it would be dessert and not like the main course that they were contributing so i I think those are adjustments that people can make and um i think i I don't think well i would like to hope that most people are not so unreasonable but you know there's nothing wrong with recycling or using the same curtains that you had up last year uh if they're clean and they're not full of holes then i see no problem but i think to I, i don't even know if it's those things that people spend a lot of money on i think it's a lot of 
um, like Omar was saying that experiences might be a better thing, but I think people are very much into getting multiple things. Like, you know, I have to give my child multiple presents. You know, it's just, you know, it's just a not Samsung the one. eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the this and the other thing, and the third and the fourth thing, and the whatever mm-hmm. other thing that they wanted. Yeah. Um, with no, not really any regard um, for what that means for you the, the day after, on Boxing Day. What does that mean? But what reality check do you have at that point? But yeah, I think experiences are a good option and it's something that maybe more of us could look at. I like to go exploring in Barbados. I usually take a couple of days off and I, usually, I, I like to try to go find somewhere that I've not been before. And it's not necessarily somewhere fun, but usually I do it with my sister or some other family members. And um, they, yeah, like I'm a history geek, so I go to find places that are his- of historical significance. And I usually like to take that time to wander around and take pictures. It makes great stuff for the gram. There we go. I, I agree with you. <laughs> over, the, over the Christmas season, a um, uh, buddy of mine from university, mm-hmm. I've not seen him in 20 years, mm. he says, I'm coming to Barbados on a Christmas cruise. Take me somewhere. And I'm like, oh my goodness, where can I take this guy? I don't know anywhere in Barbados. So I ended up taking him to Farley Hill mm-hmm. and then to Bathsheba. Mm-hmm. So I went to the very summit of Farley Hill and I felt years added on to my life <laughs> because it was so peaceful, it was so mm-hmm. serene, it was so beautiful. I went on to Bathsheba, you know, you enjoyed the rocks and the waves and the sand. And I was like, we need to do this more often. Right. As Barbadians, we get caught up in the corporate grind. A picnic, you know, for Christmas somewhere could be fantastic. Yes fantastic yes. and people pay thousands of dollars travel thousands of miles to come, come to Barbados we have it for free mm-hmm. so I think we should take advantage yeah it's true because when was the last time you'd been up to Farley Hill years exactly part of my voice <laughs> <coughs> that's the Christmas holdover yeah <laughs> I I have a question, Mm -hmm. um, ladies. Do you find there is um, still a tendency for persons to pre-spend their bonus when you aren't even sure you're getting a bonus? A bonus is something that you are not guaranteed to get. It's not a salary. And persons often spend for Christmas in anticipation of this bonus. (laughs) The economy in Barbados has not been where it should have been for a while. It's getting better now. But, you know, not all companies are able to pay bonus. What do you say to these persons? I am really glad that you brought that up because that's actually something I wanted to talk about. On the bonus topic... I've been working for myself for way too long. I never got a bonus yet. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. give myself mm-hmm. bonuses. That's, I should think about that. Yeah, right. yeah. But the other thing is, I try to practice never spending a cent that I don't have. Understood. Right there. Mm-hmm. You know? So it, it could be something really small, like, ooh, wow, TV, $2,000. Mm-hmm. I don't have $2,000, but I could get it on higher purchase, whatever. No, I honestly believe in the rigors of let me save until I can see that $2,000 physically and then I'm going to buy that TV. That's sort of the way I've That's always fine, yeah. lived. And I take that approach to like larger debt as well. Mm-hmm. You know? So anything small to big, like I try to be really rigorous with saving and putting aside, even if you tell yourself I'm going to put aside a little bit of money every month, something I can't see and it won't really hurt me, but it, I'm just putting it away because if it's there, I'm going to spend it. So I hide it for myself. <laughs> come back to it later when I'm ready for it when I want that TV or when I want you know to take a trip or whatever it's sitting there waiting you know Carl that's a very good point I like to interject something here this mm-hmm. is I, I would almost say it's a shameless plug because you know <laughs> Fortress Izzy the manager for, for this um, podcast <laughs> If you want to put money someplace where you can't see it, put it in a mutual fund. Yeah. And say you're going to come back in five years Absolutely. and then do what you want with the money. That's almost that, like a bonus right there. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. I, yeah. I believe the term was maybe more like a 10 years or something. Something, yeah. You forget about it a little bit and then you're like, ooh, birthday. Hello. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what am I going to do? This is a good time. Maybe I need to repair my car or I need to do something. It's there. You know, and I don't have to now look for it. Precisely. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely, definitely. Melinda, do you have any other recommendations for people that, you know, you know, normally some of your clients or others who may be wondering how could they adjust their spending habits or adjust their planning over the Christmas period so that they go into January in a smoother, better well, way? Well, it's, it's, it's really important to remember, especially when you receive your bonus early, mm-hmm. to consider those their main expenses you have to pay. So, um, if you actually do get a bonus, if at all possible, 
hide your blush from yourself as <laughs> um <laughs> i do that i actually do that <laughs> as as much as possible hide your bonus from yourself separate it put it in another account or put it in mutual funds as omar rightfully said um mm-hmm. so that it prevents you from going out of um out of line um if you're not someone who has you know budgeted or is not in the practice of budgeting, this will be a great chance for you to get to know your numbers better, right? So if you just simply track your spending, and this is for planning for the next Christmas. So if you simply like track your spending, you track how much you pay in gas, you track how much you pay in groceries, you track how much you spend in whatever, and you see your spending patterns, then you'll be able to make um, better adjustments to your spending. Mm. And I'm not telling people just to pull numbers over the sky and then you put yourself in trouble and then you don't, you know, make realistic plans for it. So I would say track your spending. Um, You have to know your triggers as well too because um, for me, and I always tell people I don't have a credit card and there's a reason why I don't have one. It's because I know myself, I'm gonna swipe. If I see it, I'm gonna want it and I'm gonna go and swipe. There I go spending money that I don't have. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. So it's important to know your triggers. Um, it's important to know also why you spend when you spend. And Christmas is prime time where emotions are heightened. And the, the ones who are selling the products and services want to make you believe that the only way you're going to feel complete and all Christmassy is if you're actually spending it. You're with me? So it's really important to check yourself and really not allow your emotions to dictate how you spend your money. So it's important to do those little checks with yourself, to be honest with yourself, because there are times that I've had to be honest with myself, if I can be real. Mm -hmm. And I understood that if I felt really sad, or there are times that I do feel really sad, like yesterday, I was, (laughs) (laughs) if I can be honest. Is that new shoes? No, these are not new shoes. (laughs) Funny. Um, and, And I was like, okay, let me check myself. Let me drive past this place. If I don't need it, I didn't want it. I drove past another place and I realized, you know what? I didn't really need it. So it's really important to keep your emotions in check so that you don't spend emotionally. And one of the things that I do, um, well, without even getting to bonus, because I'm aware a lot of people don't get bonus. I, but in terms of my salary, I get paid earlier in December than most people. But I do not spend that money. That money is not activated until the regular payday. So if it comes six days early or however early, much earlier it comes, that's great. If my account previously had on $3 and the salary is now in there, I still only have $3 until the 25th. That's a little Which trick I do do for myself because if not, <laughs> come the 25th or whatever the payday would normally be, I would still have $3 <laughs> all over again. Um, and so those are the kind of things that I do to just to just my just adjust my thinking so that I will have money then to go through this regular bills still need to be paid those things still need to be attended to and the other thing that I do I treat my bonus as a real surprise and a gift because a couple of years back I was planning a trip and I had planned it involving anticipating my income tax return so I had all the other elements of the trip sorted, and the only thing was, no, I was going to get my uh, income tax return, and then I was going to buy my plane ticket with that. Nice. And then it was 2014, and that was the first year that we experienced not getting our returns on time, or at all. And so I then had to scramble, sell some mutual funds, <laughs> and, and then pay, pay for my ticket that way. So since then, income tax return, bonus, could come, might not come, never come. It's a bonus when it it really is a bonus when it comes because I'm not spending it. I'm not anticipating for it. When it lands, then I I have a plan of what I'm going to do with it. Mm -hmm. But if it never lands, I'm good. I haven't spent it in, like Carly said, I haven't spent it before I received it. Absolutely. Great. I want to say one thing about planning. Um, Melinda, you were talking about that. January is such a good time to set start a whole new budget for the year. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this month is like a good month for people to sit down and work out how much they're making, what expenses they have. And I know you guys put um, on Fortress on your social media once. You had a whole breakdown of how 
you should be spending and how you should be allocating to things like rent and, and something like that. There's something that I saved. I'm going to look for it now. Okay. It's so helpful. Good, because I have no you recollection of that. You can't <laughs> recollect. It's very well. It was really helpful okay it helped me sort of break down and look am i over saving mm. <laughs> you know am i overspending because it's possible to do both yeah and uh, melinda also talked about something that i think i need to do a better job of i am very good at planning my expenses but i'm not necessarily great at tracking exactly what i spent okay because you can plan yes. but then you can completely disregard the plan um how i one of the things i do is i also use the envelope system mm -hmm. okay. so every dollar has a job and i assign I assign my cash accordingly. So that way, whatever is left is what's meant for me to spend. So if that means that there's only $6 left for me to spend, then that's what it is. Correct. But in terms of tracking that carefully, because I know that sometimes that $6 goes to me buying cheese puffs. Mm. And do I really need to buy, <laughs> do I really need to buy cheese puffs? <laughs> you know, so if no, I have like really. a random purchase at some mini mart for Three forty. I know what that is. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Cheese if, puffs. If there are a lot of, if, yeah. there, if there are a lot of, if I'm not calling a brand, so good. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's mm -hmm. cheese puffs are safe. But um, if you know, I see a bunch of three forties coming up or whatever the price is, then I I can start to say, Kim, you you have a bit of a problem here. It's true. Yeah. Something I would like to, to mention. We all mentioned the financial aspect of it, but the, some of the main problems of how we spend that Christmas come from those who are closest to us, mm. or family and friends, and we need. To communicate with these people if we communicate with them and say listen things are tight and there's nothing wrong with saying things are tight everyone is feeling it but nobody is saying it if we come out and say Christmas will be a little bit leaner this year I hope you all understand if you don't go someplace else <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very serious no, because no, in the no, end no. they're not gonna be coming to you and helping you out when January goes on for 30,000 days they tell me about everybody could help you buy a big guts horse, but everybody don't help you feed it. Something so. Something so. <laughs> I've never heard, quite heard that one. I don't think anyone has heard that I've one. Never but heard that. We, we, we get the point. <laughs> I, I, I probably bastardized it, but it's some, some probably. Page of medium. Yeah. So I think communication is a very, very important thing when it comes down to Christmas and anything else. And also saying things that are difficult. Sometimes, you know, people feel a way because they, they feel they're letting people down. You know, they, they're anticipating, well, especially like kids, you know, they. You don't want to tell the kids, uh, sorry, you're not going to get the kind of present we've had in the past. Instead, we're going on a picnic. Excuse me? It's please me cues? I can't live on a picnic under the tree. I, I don't think I would have received that well as a child. But I do remember when there was the financial crisis in, was that 91, 92? Correct. Um, I remember like my mom you know, just saying, because she'd had her salary cut by 8%. Correct. And so, so some of the family friends whose kids she normally gifted to... She just said, well, you know, I'm sorry, this year, I'm not going to be able to get you a present. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, mommy, you can say that? She's like, well, I can't. So yes. she didn't. But a lot of people feel uncomfortable seeing, you know, those kind Agreed. of things. But as, as the know. kids do grow up, I mean, mm -hmm. look back, we are thankful for the sacrifices our parents made. Of course. Because in the long run, those are things that matter. And you must understand that we as adults, and look at kids they're kids <laughs> one they're resilient and two when they get older and they're not as emotional they will understand yes. if you raise them right <laughs> yeah, yeah. melinda i remember just after christmas you started a dollar a day challenge yes i um, have was sounds that, exciting yeah was that <laughs> was that motivated by i guess people's inclination to spend a lot at christmas tell me what it was all about well it or was tell me what it's all about well right? sure no problem so Actually, it's my personal goal, okay. and I thought that I would share it with other people. So I figured, okay, you know what? Rather than having to like think about where I'm going to find the money to enjoy myself, mm -hmm. enjoy the Christmas period, why not start now and save a dollar a day towards that? Mm -hmm. And I felt very compelled about it. And then I told my mother about it. Mm -hmm. Parents are just so awesome and supportive, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, she told me, why not share it with your people on Instagram? Mm -hmm. And I thought, mom, you know what, you're, you're right. So I did that. I said, this is what's gonna happen. Um, we're gonna work towards saving a dollar a day. There are 366 days this year, because it's a leap year. Mm -hmm. And what's gonna happen, you're gonna commit to that, and you're gonna receive support. And then at the end of the year, you're gonna decide what you're gonna do with it. Either if they want to enjoy themselves, fine. If they want to invest it with 
Fortress Lens, hey. fine. Um, if they want to save it, fine. Um, so it's actually a Facebook group that I created, okay. and people have actually started coming on, and um, it's available. Um, via my Instagram profile, you just go to the link in the bio mm -hmm. and you join the community. And what I'm aiming to do in there is just like provide support, um, do lives, um, do check-ins because we did a check-in recently mm -hmm. and they're on board. You know, I asked them, "What are you saving it in? Is it a bank account? Is it a piggy bank? Is it like one person saving it in a um, a jar? Mm -hmm. Somebody saving it in a jewelry case? So mm -hmm. like people are getting on board because um, I also want to find out what their goals are also and people are looking for a change they want to be better with their spending they want to be out of debt so I just thought that you know in order to make it feel like they're not alone in this we're all together so that's why I did that so yeah and a dollar a day is an achievable amount it right? is it you is know? and you don't think it about is. it um, and then when you start throwing things like well you do a dollar a day and just save it in your piggy bank or in a empty ball in the corner somewhere it's 366 dollars at the end of the year it accumulates but if you were to invest it or you know put it in some other instrument that has a, the opportunity to earn interest then you can also multiply multiply what you've done there so that's Indeed. a great a great challenge i think it's awesome Thank and you what so i much. really like about the community as well mm -hmm. is that it's a saying that i have that if you go to a rum shop more like you're going to drink rum. Why are we talking about rum shops? But anyway, <laughs> I, I've been sober for quite some time now, so it's, it's, on, it's on the mind. So what, what's happened is, if you go to a rum shop, most likely you are going to drink rum. If you hang in a community of persons mm. who are discussing their goals, who want to do things with their money and, be, and, and save and invest, the more likely you are to do the same thing. So the more communities we have for stuff like this, the better it is for our society on a whole. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So if you spend a lot of time with people that spend all their money, you may also be encouraged to spend all your money. On cheese poofs? Cheese puffs? Cheese what? Cheese puffs are a small item purchase. I'm sorry. Off of me. Okay, this 340. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Being very rude over here. Yes, yes. It's all good. But no, that, that is a really good point, Omar. Something that we don't mm. necessarily think about. Mm. And sometimes too, we look at people, especially on Instagram, where people, everybody's sharing their highlight reel, right? So, yeah. oh, like, you've taken 40 million pictures, but yep. you post the best one. Mm -hmm. Or you look like crap all week long, or what you thought looked like crap, and then there's one day when you think you look okay, so then you share something, look, I just walk out like this. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody ever want right, to see yeah. what you walk out like. But, um... But and everyone perceives that as like, oh my gosh, look at how they're living, like, you know, they're out having a great time, whatever, blah, blah, blah. They don't see the days when you're not having those great times. You're the 99%. Exactly. And so we may be encouraged to think that we have to do things to spend and to live like that as well. But Agreed. the reality is, is that that's their life and you don't know all the backstory. You don't know any of it, actually. So you should just move along and do what you need to do and spend time with people who are not spending their money on cheese puffs, apparently. I'm sorry. <laughs> or, I'm sorry. <laughs> or, um, or just, you know, exhausting their money in ways that you may not be able to do at the time or you may never actually need to do. So today, it's been great having both you and Carly, Carly Melinda and Melinda, having you both here to share some of what you've done and learned over the years. You know, Carly talked about how it is as an entrepreneur, sort of managing, just adjusting to managing this non-existent salary that may or may not come based on mm -hmm. projects. So that was really useful. And I think a lot of people nowadays are in a similar situation. Absolutely. So appreciate that and melinda always here with the wisdom so thank you so very much thank you also. you can join melinda's dollar day challenge it's not too late no it's not you just have to get 30 dollars now and bring yourself <laughs> bring yourself bring yourself up to speed but i'm sure that you could spend that in the supermarket in the blink of an eye so if you can scrounge off 30 dollars, you can join melinda's 30 a day challenge or just realize that it'll be 236 i mean 336 you see this is why i don't do 366 this is why i don't do investment <laughs> right moving along Anyway, thank you all for listening. It's been great having you here. And I just wondered if you wanted to share with us some of the things that you've learned in or the tips or tricks that you've tried to help you, you know, better save or address address January to manage your funds. We'd be happy to hear about it. You can email us at info at fortressfund.com or message us on Instagram or Facebook. You can send us a message. And we'd love to hear, Zali, some of the things that you've been doing on your own until next time, this has been Do It For Grant Lee.
Inventive Fortress. <laughs> Do It For Grantly is a production of Fortress Funds Managers. You can listen to and download all our episodes in all the good places podcasts are available, including SoundCloud, Google and Apple Podcasts, TuneIn and more. Or on our website, fortressfund.com. That's fortressfund.com, where you can also find this episode's show notes explaining all the financial terms we mentioned in the show. Remember, let us know what you think about the podcast, this episode, or other money matters. You can email us at info at fortressfund.com or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram at Fortress Fund Managers. Most people find out about podcasts through recommendations, so spread the word and tell your friends about our show. Until next time, I'm Kim Howard. And I'm Omar Kennedy. Thanks for listening.